Hello friends, welcome back to She's in Her Apron. I am so glad you're here today because we're gonna get ready for back to school. Either if your kids are going to school or having school at home, dinner still needs to be served. Snacks need to be served, breakfast, lunches, and today I'm gonna help you make some make ahead, freezer meal, snacks, breakfast, and dinners to be ready for the back to school crazy season that's coming up. Are you ready? Aprons on, let's go. Welcome, welcome. My kids start school on the 18th and I wanna get ready. All right guys, I am so excited to get ahead of the game because we all have busy lives and getting ahead just makes things so less stressful. Okay, so before we begin, I have to tell you that I really hurt my pinky finger. You may have seen this on Instagram. I crashed it into the stairs. I tripped up the stairs, the patio deck stairs. I don't even know if my nail underneath is still on. I know, gross, right? So you're gonna see me baby this finger. It hurts really bad and I need to be super gentle, so. But the show must go on, right? We still have families to feed, kids to feed, so I'm gonna keep plugging along. All right, let's jump into it. All right, so here's my 60 count of eggs that I got at Walmart. Um, we're gonna be using these for the French toast and breakfast burritos. So I am just gonna crack a dozen of eggs and then get them scrambled, seasoned, and scrambled up and get those going for our breakfast burritos. All right, so I had some sausage, leftover sausage from the last time I worked with a big guy like this. So we're gonna use this up. I did thaw this out. I don't know if I will need all that, but I'm gonna cook it up. So, and have it in the freezer for times like this where I could just break apart, break apart some sausage when I need it in recipes. So, but I bet I'll probably need a little more than this. I'm not doing a ton of breakfast burritos, but I wanna use this up first and then I'll cook this up and then freeze the rest if we don't use it or whatever. All right, just browning up that sausage. The other one is in a bowl just heating up in here. Um, and, then we'll let this cool so we can handle it. It is loud in here with the microwave, the dishwasher going. It's even great buying yourself sausage in bulk like this and just cooking it up ahead of time for anything like soups and breakfasts and all this stuff. Just having it ready to go for you will save you a step during a crazy week. I'm not in the mood to fry bacon. Just not. So that's why I love having on hand the pre-cooked bacon for times like this. So, and I might be down to my last pound of bacon. So we, um, I got a upcoming Costco haul coming your way. So that will be in it. But I do want some bacon in the breakfast burrito. So I'm going to heat up a few of these slices and break them up. And get the help where you can get it. If it's pre-cooked bacon, do it. Whatever it takes. So on this bag, I'm going to put breakfast burritos and I'm going to use this bag over and over again. So, um, but when we moved, I tossed out the, actually, no, I didn't toss it out. I gave the last few to Callie and Felix. She took them home with her, the last few. So I don't longer have that bag. So breakfast burritos. Okay, so I have my saran wrap. So we're gonna wrap these up in the saran wrap and then they're gonna go in here. Put down the egg, sausage, bacon. My kids like both in it. Um, you could throw salsa in here if you wanted to. Jonah likes to dip his in salsa. He's my um, 16 year old. He likes doing that. It's been a hot minute since I rolled a burrito. I'm always like, which way do I do it? So to reheat these, I'll take them out of the foil. If you can't get them out of the foil when they're frozen, um, just soften it in the microwave for a little bit so you can rework the saran wrap. And then, um, I'll wrap it in a paper towel and I do um, about a minute and 30. Sometimes it's way quicker than that, you guys. It really just depends on your microwave. And um, yeah, but I like having it in a paper towel. It keeps it 
moisture. Um, yeah, but don't cook it with the saran wrap on, obviously. Some people wrap this in aluminum foil. I don't, I just don't see the point. These hold up beautifully like this. So I'm gonna keep going and getting them in this bag. Okay, got a package of breakfast burritos ready to go into the freezer. Okay, I have the cooked sausage in this bag with the air out, labeled, ready to go into the fridge or freezer. I was trying to think of anything I can make with it this week. I think I'm gonna keep this in the um, refrigerator for a day or two, um, see if there's anything else, um, meal plan, and see if I can roll it into anything. If not, I'm just gonna throw this into the freezer. And this can be frozen again, even though it came out of the freezer frozen, because we altered its state, we cooked it, we could freeze it again. The eggs are done, the sausage is done. So while that is cooling a bit, I'm gonna crack some eggs for the French toast. What seasoning do you put in your French toast? I like to do um, cinnamon, nutmeg, and a splash of vanilla. What do you like to do to, for your French toast? Okay, today I'm using Texas Toast, um, thick slice by Franz. This holds up in the freezer beautifully. I actually got this bread at the Franz outlet store in Provo, Utah, and I was like, yeah! My friend Denise told me about this outlet, and I was so excited to go. I got a bunch of stuff for the freezer and to make things with, and I purposely got two of their Texas Toast for this occasion. I have my griddle here sprayed down um, with oil because I noticed it's not, you don't need oil for this one, but I don't know if it's getting old, but it needs it. And it's funny because this isn't old. I've had this for about a year, but we use it so much. Now you guys, tr try not to accomplish all this in a day. Take one day to do breakfast and maybe another day to do your snacks and lunches and dinners, you know. Take one day, especially if you're not used to doing freezer meals and cooking in bulk. It can be overwhelming, so it doesn't have to be. Just take take a little bit of time and plan it out. I have my dishwasher on. It's so loud. I'm sorry, guys. but I hit the button last night to start it, but you're supposed, to, you're supposed to hit it twice, and I didn't know that, so it it's taking a little while. So it took longer, and now, yeah, it is what it is. And get your family involved in this. Get your kids involved. Um, Shaylee was just over here um, when I was doing the sausage. She was helping me brown it up. And Shaylee is my youngest, and she is nine. Get your kids involved, especially those kids that love to cook. Oh my gosh. And even those that don't, it's a good learning experience. <laughs> Do you guys remember the video back in our first cheese in our apron home where I forced my oldest son to help me with the meatloaf and get his hands in there and mix the meat and he was freaking out. Do you guys remember that? Oh, Jonah's so funny. That was hilarious, by the way. So every time I make meatloaf, he like, he loves it, but it, he cringes because he remembers the feel of it. It was so funny. Have your favorite music or show on, on in the background when you have a day like this? I'm watching. Previously on Desperate Housewives. <laughs> Find something that you can listen to or watch, but you're really listening to it while you're doing stuff like this. It just gets the time going in your mind somewhere else. And so right now I'm listening to Desperate Housewives. I love that series. I just do. So I've got that on in the background while I'm doing my thing. Okay, so you can do French toast in the Ziploc bag too if you want. But I'm just going to put them right back into these bags and freeze them this way. Um, that way the kids could go in and grab one out, grab two out. These don't end up sticking together on each other, which is fantastic. So they could go in, grab 
a couple for the toaster and put them in the toaster and cook them up and crisp them that way. They don't, they really don't have to like thaw them out for some, I mean you could for like just a bit in the microwave but the toaster like does them good. So you can stick them in your toaster oven, put them in the microwave. might add more in that one some of these are still a little warm I'm feeling the ones that are had other ones on top of each other so I'm just gonna throw them once it cools down just a little more before I put them in the freezer um, and then I'll tie these stick them in the freezer of course I'm gonna show the kids them because they won't know if I don't show them after I do all these meals I tell them and show them what we got and then they can go grab this and this helps them with their independence if you have little ones they could go in grab one or your husband or yourself if you don't want to make anything they can go in by themselves and get some this won't last long this and pancakes go so fast. We love having breakfast on the weekends, especially Sundays, and um, if they want French toast and I don't wanna make it or don't have the bread to do it, we already have it and we'll end up taking one of these. So there you have it, French toast going right into the freezer, ready for us to gobble up. All right, next we're gonna work on an after-school snack for the kids, which is bagel pizza bites. So good. I have a bag of mini bagels, okay? And I have a bottle I found in my food storage room of pizza sauce. You can make your own, We've done it a zillion times, love it. But get the help where you can get it, and I'm using this. And then I have a block of Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna cut some and shred it up. And then uh, this is the last of my pepperoni. We love pepperoni in my family. So what I'm going to, which is, this is huge, right? For a mini bagel. <laughs> but what I'm gonna do is just chop this up. Um, you can use the little round pepperonis for these and I've done that before and I've shared that with you. But I'm just going to, um, I'm just going to cut up the pepperoni so we can use them on our bagels, shred the cheese, and then I'll show you how I assemble them. Totally thought I was recording. You guys weren't there. Where were you? Anyway, it's recording now. So I opened up the bagel, put some sauce on, and then we're gonna put our cheese. It's gonna get messy, so just do your best. And then you'll notice that when you freeze them and take them out of the freezer to cook that a lot of the toppings and cheese will fall off. It's okay, when you get them out on your cookie sheet, your baking sheet, just add it back on, you're fine. Okay, and then I'm gonna add some pepperoni. Boom, there you go. What I am doing is I am placing them on this baking sheet and we're gonna set that into the freezer for a little while so they can harden, so we could work with them to put them in the bags or however you're gonna do it. Like I'm pre-freezing them to be able to bunch them together so that they don't stick and get all gross. And this is a yummy after school snack. I can't think off the top of my head exactly what I heat them at. I'm sure it's here on the screen somewhere for you. And I'll have it down below. And not only does this make a good after school snack, but this also makes a good lunch. I know you love them, huh? Yeah. All right, the bagel bites are done. I'm gonna get, get this whole baking sheet in the freezer so they could pre-freeze. All right, here are the pizzas, nice and frozen. I'm actually this time gonna put them in this container. And these make, like I said, a great lunch or after school snack. I do have a video um, where I did freezer meal snacks. I think it was in, in a dessert video too. And I will leave that down below. All my playlists for the freezer meals will be down there. But I did do some snacks and lunches 
for you. I think that's all I'm gonna be able to fit and I'll put these last four in a baggie. All right, I pulled out some ground beef. Um, we're gonna get this thought out. This is a pound and these are a pound and a half, I believe. So I'm going to make sloppy joes for dinner tonight and then the rest is going to be in the freezer for lunches later for them. All right, so while that ground beef is thawing out, I'm gonna work on some hoagie sandwiches. All right, we're working on the lunch portion now. So the bagel bites could either be lunch or snack. So that was the snack for this vlog. <laughs> um, um, as you saw, I'm thawing out, you can hear the microwave right now, ground beef for Sloppy Joes for lunches. The kids absolutely love this. You could serve a Sloppy Joe, of course, in a hamburger bun. You could serve them in a hoagie bun, hot dog bun, whatever you have, really. And so now here's some hoagie rolls. I'm going to make some ham and roast beef sandwiches and get them prepped and ready so they can make their lunches in the morning they could go and grab a sandwich and it's thawed out and ready by the time they have lunch at school so you can also do this you could pull it out in the morning um, set it out and it'll thaw very quickly it's great um, I've also done this with peanut butter and jelly sandwiches I do have a video on it I'll leave it down below tip for the peanut butter and jelly sandwiches put peanut butter on both sides of the bread and then put your jelly the oils and the peanut butter make it so it doesn't go soggy. Also, when you're going to make, as you're gonna see me do, when you make your ham and cheese sandwiches with whatever bread you use, put the mustard and the mayonnaise in the middle with the slices of meat or cheese um, because if you put it on the bread, it'll make it soggy. So there's a tip for you. So I am using what I have left um, for lunch meat. This was um, in the freezer and then I thawed it out. So I'm gonna use the rest of this ham and then I have some roast beef left. Uh, I'm gonna just make until I run out. Um, I will be doing a Costco haul next week and I'll just buy more. But I'm gonna go until I run out. Anytime you have leftover lunch meat in rolls, go ahead and make up some sandwiches and freeze them. You'll be so happy you did. Just having them on hand is fantastic. So when you're out and about, running around, you have lunch. My kids go through phases with cheese and sometimes they like the cheese and sometimes they don't in their sandwich. Right now they're in a no cheese kind of phase right now, which is fine. Are you a mayo, are you a mayo or Miracle Whip family? We like Miracle Whip on our sandwiches. Um, we'll do either, we'll do either. Um, but I just discovered this at Walmart, and it's delicious. It's um, Bino's Original Submarine Dressing. Shake it up really good. It's like a vinegar based um, with a ton of seasonings. You guys, it makes your sandwich so good. So good. So it has soybean oil, red wine vinegar, salt, sugar, and other assorted spices. It reminds me of the grinder sandwiches back east. They're called grinders like this, um, instead of hoagies or subs. Oh, I'm running out of ham. I am done with ham. Oh, that stinks. We're gonna do what we can today with what we got. Some roast beef sandwiches. Maybe I will take some from here and do that. Funny story, when I was younger and my mom was out of town and my dad would make sandwiches or if my mom was at work and my dad made us lunch, I always knew that there necessarily wouldn't be a ham sandwich, it'd be a Spam sandwich. So I grew up with Spam sandwiches. And now I can't stand Spam. <laughs> so some of these are ham, Straight up ham, some have roast beef in them. I'm not gonna do, um, oh well I'm out. I was gonna say I'm not gonna do roast beef in all of them, but I'm out. I used on my lunch meat. So this is what we're doing. And I have four hoagies left over. That's fine. I'm gonna do the mayonnaise and mustard. And yes, I will call Miracle Whip Mayo. <laughs> 
All right. And then just put the tops on. All right, I have eight sandwiches ready for this back to school season. Of course, I will make more down the road, but a good start, eight sandwiches. Now, if you think your little one can't eat a whole one of these, just cut it in half and freeze them in half. Now, I know in the comments you're gonna say, oh, so much plastic. Yes, I know, but this is so much easier. And these will last for a good couple weeks in your fridge freezer and even like longer than a couple of weeks like I've had sandwiches in there for over a month and they've done great so just stick them in there you're ready to go or for make ahead if you don't want to freeze them just stick them in your refrigerator they're ready to go for the week so either way you're good and then if you don't think you're gonna get through them in the week put them in the freezer so you have them anything to do to stay one step ahead of all the busyness You'll be so happy. My kids love hoagie sandwiches, especially my oldest son. He loves them. For some reason, um, when he was younger, for back to school lunches, he preferred having a ham sandwich in a hoagie than regular bread. But one wouldn't cut it for him. He would have to take two to school. So I will be making more of these for sure. The kids love them. And I'll definitely down the road do some PB&Js. Everybody loves a good PB&J. Are you kidding? I love PB&J. Do you know you can have a long day running around? Go grab a, a sandwich out of the freezer, put it in your purse. It'll be thawed out and you can have it later on the road when you're like seriously everywhere. All right, so I got this. Here we have it, hoagie sandwiches ready for back to school. Another thing that I absolutely love about Make Ahead sandwiches, especially freezer, especially about freezer sandwiches is, is finishing the summer, if you're going on trips or anything, camping, anything, take some of the frozen sandwiches that are already made for you. So we have a road trip coming up um, Labor Day weekend and if we don't want to spend money on the road for fast food, we could go ahead and grab those sandwiches. Oh, I'll be making more. Those will be gone by the time Labor Day comes when we leave. But just having them in the cooler ready to go instead of trying to get ready like the day before the trip making sandwiches that'll drive you crazy. They're already made. So there's always a benefit to always rotating and having these things in your freezer. Starting to brown this ground beef and I'm doing it in a pot because it's a lot of sloppy joes. The recipe is the Pioneer Woman's recipe. I'll have it linked down below, okay? So basically, once this is browned, I'm gonna be adding peppers and onions and all types of spices to it, so good. But the full recipe is down below. All right, I'm gonna get this browned up, um, and then I'm gonna chop up some green peppers and onions to get them in here. So for two and a half pounds, just for a normal serving, you need uh, one large green bell pepper, but I'm gonna use two. So, I might do another half of this one, we'll see. And then you need one half of a large onion dice, so I'm gonna use this whole thing. This thing's huge, this thing's a, a big one. I don't feel like doing the chopping tonight, so I'm gonna use this. This is Shaper Image, I found it on Amazon. So I'm gonna use this, because why not? Sometimes I chop them by hand, sometimes I don't. Tonight, I, I don't feel like it. So we're gonna put this one in. Got my um, garbage bowl, learned that from Rachel Ray years ago. So I'm gonna peel this onion and I am going to use this chopper and chop up the onions and the peppers and then we'll get them in the pot. Having one of these makes freezer meals so much easier. Sometimes I just get going on the cooking and the chopping, and I'm like, oh yeah, I could have used my veggie chopper. 
<laughs> I honestly forget you guys, seriously. There's my finger, <laughs> it's hurting. <laughs> oh my gosh. My friend Becky said she hurt her finger like this and it took up to two weeks for the pain to go away. Holy moly. Well, there's enough to keep me busy this, these next two weeks, so. All right. So I drained the fat out. Now I'll add the onions and peppers in. Now I'm gonna leave the recipe down below for you, but this is basically what you need in it. You need um, garlic, Worcestershire sauce, salt and pepper, uh, brown sugar, chili powder, dry mustard, red pepper flakes, oh, and ketchup. Yeah, so I'm gonna get all of that in here and then it's going to simmer for 20 minutes, okay? And then you have the best Sloppy Joes. If you want to make this completely for freezer meals um, at this point, just throw everything in, mix it up and get it in the bags, don't heat it through because you're gonna have to simmer it anyway later. Um, so do that at this point, but we're gonna have some of this for dinner. So I'm gonna let this um, Cool when we're all done after dinner and then bag it up. Oh, there you have it the sloppy joes. They are delicious so the kids are eating and uh, I think My son right now is getting his second one. Holy cow. So um, as soon as the rest of the mixture free um, cools down, we'll freeze it but the Sloppy Joe is so good. Two Sloppy Joe mixes ready for meals for another time. Okay, let's jump into dinners. I'm gonna be sharing one of my favorite recipes. I've shared it the very start of She's in Her Apron and it's chicken in a hurry. This is a slow cooker meal, which is seriously the best. Everyone loves it. There's never leftovers. Your kids will love it. All right, I'm gonna put chicken in, the, in a hurry. Low cooker, gotta put all the details in case it's you, not you that's warming this up, but if it's somebody else. Okay, so high for four to five hours and low for seven to eight hours. I like using for this recipe drumsticks. I just do. I take the skin off. Um, we've done chicken thighs, love it as well, but we really love it with the drumsticks. So you're gonna need chicken drumsticks with the skin off. You're gonna need a fourth cup of sugar for the sauce, a half cup of ketchup, a fourth cup of water, a packet of onion soup mix, and a little bit of cornstarch for thickening. I'm going to actually double the sauce recipe for this. I like having more in there, so I'm gonna be doubling the sauce. But all right, I'm gonna get this cleaned up, I'm gonna get the skin off, and then we're gonna bag it up. This used to be our Sunday dinner when the kids were just itty bitties. <laughs> um, every Sunday, once I found this recipe, we would put this in the slow cooker, head to church. Oh my gosh, such a good one. And a lot of you that have already made this have come back and commented on how good you liked it, and, and that's awesome. I'm going to put my Ziploc bag in this bowl. Gonna get our chicken in. I'm just gonna pour this in. Oh, it smells so good. Alright, we're going to get the air out as best as we can right here. And we're going to mix it all together. And that's it. Take it out the night before. Get that thawing process going. If Even if you don't um, that day, you take it out, thaw it out a little bit in your microwave. And then stick it in your slow cooker. It's okay if your chicken's still a little bit frozen. You're just going to alternate your cooking time um, so it'll just cook longer oh my gosh you guys there you have it chicken in the hurry one of our 
favorite meals. Seriously, a hit. Okay, friends, we are going to make Herbs de Provence chicken. We're gonna make Herbs de Provence chicken. This is from the Seriously Good Freezer Meal Cookbook. I can't rave enough about this cookbook. Link is below for you to get it. Carrie is amazing. I absolutely love her and her recipes are the bomb. Haven't had one we haven't liked. And so tonight I'm gonna make for the freezer meal the Herbs de Provence chicken. She tells you what to do to have it, you know, fresh that night. But we're gonna, we're just gonna make this into a freezer meal. So I have my chicken thighs here um, and it calls for bone in skin on chicken thighs. So I got all my chicken on sale this past week for 78 cents a pound. How awesome is that? We will be using a baker's aluminum pan dish for this recipe. So we're gonna need one tablespoon of red wine vinegar, one tablespoon of olive oil, one half teaspoon of freshly squeezed lemon juice, You'll need to mince up some garlic, uh, two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, one and a half teaspoons of Herbe de Provence. This is the main star in my uh, chicken orzo soup recipe, which is so good, link down below. You'll need black pepper, salt, your chicken thighs, and an onion thinly sliced. And I'm gonna use 10 of this. Um, maybe I'll put just a little bit more of each in this bowl for my 10. So we're gonna take our pan and we're gonna put uh, the sliced onions at the bottom. That will be delicious. All right, we're gonna coat our chicken in this mixture and then lay it over our onions. This is gonna get messy, just get in there. You're gonna have it um, skin side up. I'm gonna have to make two trays of this cause it's not all, this is not enough sauce. How does she make? The sauce spread for all of this. It's just not gonna happen. How does she do that? All right, well, I'm gonna have to make more. I don't know how she makes that work. These are some big chicken thighs. All right, I'm gonna make more and get it in this pan. Looks like I'm gonna be doing two pans of this. Okay, so I took some of the onions from the other pan so I didn't have to cut up more. We're just gonna lay that on here and get this chicken on. It smells really good. I mean, really good. She did say put all the chicken in a bowl and stir it all together, but I can't, still just did not seem like enough. I like a lot of flavor, like, <laughs> it's gotta be coated. Okay, so this one will have four, so this is a double duty freezer meal that I need to Take out both and I will put one of two on the um, instructions for this because one is obviously not gonna feed my family. I wanted to say family of six. We're now a family of seven with my son-in-law but eating at home. We're not anymore, I guess. Oh, so sad. I go to cook it. Stay tuned in vlogs. When I cook this meal, I will make sure um, that you'll see it. And once that happens, I'll link it in this video. Okay, so if you wanna cook this straight off, you know, straight from here, preheat your oven to 375, 50 minutes or until juices run clear and chicken is pierced. And then she says, um, once these are frozen, thaw them and cook, but place baking dish in the refrigerator for at least 24 hours up to 48 hours to thaw. Remove the foil, preheat oven again to 375. Bake in a preheated oven for 50 minutes or until juices run clear. All right, smells so good. I'm saying cook both on top. So I have Herbs de Provence chicken, 375 degrees, 50 minutes. All right, as soon as that permanent marker dries, I'll get this in the freezer and we've got a yummy chicken dish waiting for us. All right, this is one of our favorite recipes. I love doing this when I go to make freezer meals, just to have, but I don't wanna try anything new. My go-to, it's the crock pot pesto ranch chicken thighs. A jar of pesto, says six ounces the recipe, this is an eight ounce jar. 
whatever, just get that pesto in there. Now my favorite pesto is the one from Costco. Um, I love getting their big jar. I have some frozen in the freezer right now. Um, but this is quick grab and grow. I didn't have to thought out. But I did a taste test with this recipe. I don't know, some of you that's been with us for a while remember, I did a taste test on like a couple of different brands of um, pesto and this one won. So you can use a packet of ranch dressing or um, we have this, so I put three tablespoons in. And then you're gonna need a half a cup of chicken broth. Always freeze your tried and true recipes. Whatever you guys always eat, make freezer meals out of that. And so you're not so intimidated by freezer meals. I'll just mix that in here like this. Oh, my finger hurts. <laughs> I swear it's getting worse. I gotta get it bandaged up when we're done so I can go to sleep tonight. If you're wondering what time it is right now, it's like 8.30. So I'm trying to hurry up and finish this so I could go out and have a fire with my family. So it could take all day to do this and it takes me longer when I'm filming, but like I said, you don't need to do all of these in one day. Okay, just throw your chicken in. These are bone in skinless chicken thighs. All right, we're gonna mix, get the air out, and mix this up. You mix it, I'll take out the garbage. Thank you. This is the Pesto Ranch Chicken Bear. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know. I haven't had that for a while. This is one of our favorites. I try to always keep a bag of this in the freezer, and we just, right before the move, ate our last one. Let's be honest. We try to keep a lot in the freezer. We do. Because frankly, I'm lazy. <laughs> no, no, I keep busy, but you just get lazy because you're so busy. Instead of getting takeout. Just, sometimes you want a fast meal. You do. That's why I love doing these. Take one day that absolutely exhausts you. And I love it when you're not around. <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, if you're not around, <laughs> I, love, I love the freezer meal. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, I still, all right. I still love you, baby. Thank you. <laughs> we just celebrated our 22nd wedding anniversary a couple weeks ago. All right, Pesto Ranch Chicken. I'm, if you haven't tried it, you gotta try this. This is a hit. So good. All right, this is going in the freezer. I thought I had a red pepper for my sweet and sour meatballs, but I don't. But I will do that during the week. With you guys, um, you'll see me prepare more meals in my day in the life videos. Because um, periodically during the week, I prepare one or two. So I'm just gonna go do the good old basic bar honey barbecue chicken um, and get it on, just get it in a bag, pour this on, Seal it up, get it in the refrigerator so we could barbecue up chicken during the week. All right, I'm gonna get all the air out. Mix that up. And the chicken's gonna have so much flavor because once you start thawing out, it's marinating. So good going in the freezer. Thank you so much for joining me on this. This was so fun. Just try to find some time in your schedule to be able to do something like this. It could take you a couple of days. It could take you one day. Um, but whatever you can do to plan ahead and have things ready for when life is busy just really will take some stress off of you. And right now with how things are going, a little stress off our shoulders would do us good. Um, any tips, tricks, ideas, menu ideas, please leave them down below so we can all get some fresh new ideas and be able to slide through this crazy beginning of the school year. Thank you so much for joining me and we'll see you soon. Bye.